Hi, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a walkthrough video for converting mixed numbers to improper fraction sheet one from MathSalamanders.com. MathSalamanders has tons of great resources and worksheets, so make sure to check them out. I have a link in the description below. I also have a Math Salamanders playlist. Make sure to check that out. So the principle of this worksheet is talking about converting mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, what does that mean? Well, in everyday life, we're going to be using mixed numbers a little bit more, especially in recipes. You'll see something like use one and one third cup of flour. OK, but when, when we're talking about math, it is way more simple to use what's called an improper fraction. Improper fraction has a bigger denominator, uh, sorry, bigger numerator than its denominator. So, uh, yeah, converting into mixed numbers into improper fractions is actually a fairly straightforward process. But let me break down what it means. So we have here one and one third. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight what that means in regard to if we have, let's say, a fraction, a circle of a fraction. I like to think of it as pizza, but I'm coloring it blue, so probably not pizza. Let me just try that again. So I have one more time. So I have here a fraction. I have all three filled up. The reason why I have all three filled up is because I have one whole. And one whole is essentially three out of three. Okay, So I have all three pieces. And then I also have one third of another piece. Okay, So I have one third of, a of another whole. And that's what that fraction is represented by. Now, if I'm trying to convert it into an improper fraction, I don't have the whole number anymore. But instead, I count the total number of pieces. Remember that a fraction is written as a part out of the whole. Okay, Essentially, you can translate it for a lot of these problems into the shaded area, the number of shaded pieces out of the total pieces from one whole. Okay, So think of the whole as just one whole. So let's talk about the whole first. There's already a three there. And that's because each one of these holes has only three pieces, one, two, three. But how many total parts are there? One, two, three, four. So there's four total parts. This uh, then becomes, when you have one and one third, becomes four thirds. There's four total shaded pieces out of three for each hole. Okay, That's how we interpret it. So it's actually a pretty simple process. Over here in our example, we see that we have the 3 and the 5. And you multiply those together. And then you add the 1 from the top, the one piece that's already there. Essentially, the, what this does is this takes your total number of parts per hole times the number of holes you have. That will tell you how many total complete filled in circles that you have, Okay, so or pieces from those circles. And that's 15. And then you add the 1 that's left over. Anything in the numerator is kind of what's just left over, kind of like we had this one over here just left over. Okay, So that's, that's how you interpret this. And I'm going to show you that it's a very uh, simple process. So here we have number 2. We have our denominator of 2. We have a whole number of 2 out in front. So I'm going to uh, change colors here just so it's a little bit more uh, apparent of what we're doing. So I'm going to make this green. I'm going to make our whole blue. So what we do here is we multiply the denominator times that whole number. And then we are going to add whatever's left up here in the top. Let's make it purple. So we have that numerator. Those are the pieces left over. And we're going to add that in the top. So when we do 2 times 2 plus 1, that's going to give us 5. So I'm going to kind of move this up so you don't uh, miss it. You don't forget it. I'm going to write the completed answer here, 5 over 2. Now, keep in mind, too, that this denominator is going to stay the same in each one of these problems. So you can see here, the denominator stays the same. It stays the same. So with these ones over here that are not filled in yet, we're just going to write in the same number. So if you want to go ahead and do that, that's, that's probably a good strategy. So here we have, uh, let's over here, we have 3. We have 4. And then we have 6. And we have two. So that's probably the easy part. Now we're going to continue. And we're going to do three times. And we have to multiply by the whole number out in front, three. And then we can't forget to add the numerator, plus one. Those are the pieces left over. OK, I'm going to go over to this one real quick. And then uh, we'll repeat this process. So I'm adding this numerator. And then I'm multiplying the denominator. Oops, the denominator is four times that number out in front. That's the number of total whole pieces that we have. 
and then that will give us our answer. So let's go ahead and back to number five. So number five, I'm going to move this up. I'm going to squiggly line it, and then I'm just going to calculate this. So three times three is nine, plus one is ten. Ten thirds is the same as three and one third. Move over here. Let's move this guy up. We're going to multiply four times one. That's still four. Add the three, and we have seven. So seven fourths is the same. Now this becomes a pretty straightforward process, uh, and you can actually probably do it in your head. So if we do six times two, okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do is multiply. And then I'm going to add. So I have 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13, and I'm done. See how this becomes a pretty quick process? So then we have 4 times 2, and then 4, or sorry, that uh, result plus 1. So that's 8 plus 1 is 9. And just like that, you can do all these problems super fast. I'll do a couple more just so you can see what I'm, uh, see that it's a quick process. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11, and I keep it over 6. This is 12 over 5. This is 15 over 7. And sometimes you don't want to go too fast. You make some mistakes. A common mistake I see is maybe messing up the denominator, or you multiply the numerator and add the number out in front. So you got to be careful you don't go too fast. Um, even someone like me, I, I tend to make mistakes if I'm going too fast and I'm not paying close attention to what I'm doing. But that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out my channel and my playlist for Mass Salamanders to see more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.